welcome to the newest iteration of my train tutorial series. This time I'm going to talk you through the possibility of mixing trains together with the circuit network. Yo kids, did you ever have the problem that your trains were too stupid for your smart and well planned out factory? Sometimes they just drive to a station that currently doesn't need more stuff. Sometimes they just don't act like you want. Here is how to increase the IQ of any train by at least 121% just for the cost of some funny colored wire and a few blinky boys. Just in case this is the first time you hear about the circuit network, I'm going to give you a crash course to it. After you completed the research for the circuit network, which only requires red and green science, you unlock a bunch of items needed to build such a circuit network. The main thing we need at this point is red or green wire, which is used to connect different machines together, which in return creates a circuit network. There are two colors, so you can connect one machine to two different circuit networks as they only work across one color of wire. Some machines can add different values for different signals to the circuit network, which are then transported via the wires and can be read by all connected machines. For example, you could connect a train signal and a lamp together like that. Then you could set a signal to output its current state. With the default settings, it then outputs the signal green with a value of 1 if the signal is green. That's the same for yellow and red. The lamp can now react to the signal and light up in a color which has any value that isn't zero. There are signals for every item and fluid in the game, as well as some virtual signals that represent a certain color, letter or digit. If you want to have a larger circuit network or carry a signal over longer distances, then you can connect the wire to a power pole. This way you can create longer reaching signals. When you hover over such a power pole with your mouse, you can also read the contents of the circuit network. A few machines only exist to manipulate values of a circuit network. There is the constant combinator which is used to output constant values to the circuit network. The arithmetic combinator is used to do math like adding two values together or multiplying them. The result is an output on another wire with a signal that you can choose. The decider combinator is just like the arithmetic combinator, but it does logical operations instead of doing math. It can compare two signals and check if one is larger or if they are equal or not equal. There are also some more things to the circuit network, but I think this should be enough knowledge you need for now. How can all the train related items interface with a circuit network? Let's start at the train stops. The train stop can be turned off if a certain condition is met. For instance, if the value of iron exceeds 5831, the train stop will be ignored by trains and link red if it is disabled. This means that trains will skip it or they will go to different train stop with the same name if there are any. The train stop can also give the circuit a signal to the train waiting in the train stop which a train then can use for a wait condition. The contents of the train could also be read to be then fed into the circuit network. For example, if the train contains 4209 iron plates and one fish that somehow managed to get in there, then the train stop could add a value of 4209 iron plates and one fish to the circuit network. Every train you will ever build has its own unique identifying ID, which can also be read by the train stop. The ID will then be put onto the circuit network with the value of the train's ID that currently waits in the train stop and a signal that you can specify. Signals can also interact with circuit networks. They can put the current state of the signal onto the circuit network or they can also be controlled by said circuit network. I also want to mention chests and inserters, but also pumps and liquid tanks here, as they are also crucial for building stations. Inserters and pumps can be controlled by the circuit network, which means that you can create a condition for every inserter and pump, and when this condition is true, they will be turned on and start working. Chests and liquid tanks, on the other hand, can put their current contents onto the circuit network. 
This will add the values for the different signals with the values for those signals which are currently in the circuit network. But what can you do with this that is actually useful? Well, first off, by connecting all chests together with the same colored wire, they will output and add together the stuff that is stored in them. Now we always know how many items are waiting in the station to be processed or to be transported away. We technically only need to fill the station up with a particular resource if it gets nearly depleted. So, turning the train stop off whenever the station still contains enough resources can be useful to keep trains from driving around unnecessarily. We can obviously also reverse this and turn train stops only on if the station contains enough stuff that should depart to be used in other parts of our factory. Stackers are often used to let trains wait in a special area, so they don't have to wait on the main line. These stackers can also be controlled with the circuit network. Each type of resource gets its own designated waiting spot with the train stop. Those train stops then pass the contents of the circuit network through to the waiting train and the train uses this as a wait condition. This way the trains only enter the station if they are needed for refilling. You could also monitor your trains to some extent with speakers. Speakers output a sound or warning icon if a certain condition is met. Train stops are able to put the unique ID of a stop train onto the circuit network. This means you can set a warning to occur each time a specific train stops in a station. But keep in mind that every time you add or remove locomotives or wagons from a train, the ID changes. You could receive a notification each time a specific train stops in a station this way. If you have multiple train stops in a station that are receiving the same thing, then you could also distribute your trains to only go to the emptiest stop by comparing the amount of stuff in each station and then turning only one train stop on. There are a lot more things you could do, so you are welcome to use your imagination here. There are a couple different ways to build an intelligent train station. For this example I built a station which produces gears. The input has three train stops for trains to unload iron. Three train stops are a bit too much in this configuration and they are not all efficiently used. But I chose to use three because I think this kind of shows off the capabilities of such a system better. All the chests in each individual train stop are wired together. This results in an amount of iron in the circuit network which reflects how much iron is in all the chests. This signal is then fed into an arithmetic combinator which divides the amount of iron by 48, as there are 48 chests. So we get the average of iron in each chest. This isn't really necessary, but it makes it easier when setting up some limits. Speaking of limits, I am disabling each train stop as soon as the average amount of iron in this specific train stop is more than 1000. This results in trains only visiting the train stop once it's nearly depleted. I also set a wait condition for the trains, so they are leaving the train stop if they are empty or if the average amount of iron in each chest exceeds 3000. You probably already realized that this doesn't make much sense here, as this wait condition will never become true because the trains empties itself every time here. But maybe I would want to let the same trains drive to another station where this condition might come in handy. I also wanted to show you that this is also a thing you could do. I also wired all the individual train stops together to get the total average of all the three train stops. For this I used another arithmetic combinator. However, one arithmetic combinator has only two inputs, so I needed another one. I also used a third one which basically only converts the first iron signal into a virtual signal of the same amount. So I can convert the green wire into a red one, as I don't want two signals to get mixed up at the arithmetic combinator. The end result which then has the same amount as all iron in the chests of the stations combined gets then divided by the total amount of chests. This way we can have the total average of each iron in each chest. Now I simply feed this signal into a programmable speaker. 
This way I set up an alarm that gets activated as soon as the average amount of iron in each chest goes below 100. On the output side where trains come into another set of three train stops I also built some circuit magic. It is essentially the same thing as with the iron delivery just without the speaker. Again there is one circuit to read the contents of each chest an arithmetic combinator which calculates the average amount of gears in each chest and the train stop which gets enabled as soon as the amount of gears in each chest gets greater than 500. Now we spiced up a single train stop, but what if we could add some more spiciness to our entire train network? One thing I think is quite useful is a global circuit network which can carry a hold signal. In my case it's the letter H. As soon as this signal has a value of 1, all train stops shut off and the train stops in a big stacker which are usually disabled turn on. This will make all trains come back to the big stacker. When the signal H doesn't have any value, basically a value of 0, everything will operate as usual. You can also add an additional wait condition in the trains to always directly leave any train stop they are in as soon as H has a value that isn't zero. This is quite useful for doing some maintenance work. The wiring with the stations can be quite difficult if you already have them wired into the circuit network, but you should be able to master this challenge with some additional logic. If you make all your train stations intelligent, then you can set up something like a round robin network. In such a network all your trains of one kind, for example iron delivery trains, can be set to drive to each station by just naming all the stations the same. This way the trains will always drive to the next free station based on some pathfinding and route planning algorithms. But only all stations that currently need iron are turned on, so the trains distribute automatically. That way you can easily add more stations and you won't need to think much about how many trains this one new station will need. This obviously wasn't everything you can do with the circuit network and trains, but it should give you a good overview about different possibilities. Now you can play a little bit around with that and maybe even come up with your own ideas. Every player likes to play Factorio a little bit different, so I wish you the best of fun setting up your own train network now. I also want to thank the fellow reddit user singing C Shantis for suggesting the topic for this tutorial. A big thank you also goes out to a few redditors of the Factorio subreddit who helped me to better understand this topic by telling me what they are using the circuit network for. I hope you could get a few new ideas to improve the efficiency of your train network. Also, it would be pretty nice of you if you would rate this video and give me some constructive criticism down below in the comments. If you don't want to miss out on any new videos, you are obviously also allowed to subscribe to my channel. So long and thanks for all the fish, see you all next time.